Hello everybody and thank you for joining us here on Electronic Science. Today we're going to be showing you how you can connect an LCD screen to your Raspberry Pi to make it output letters, numbers, and basically any character you can possibly come up with. Alright, Happy New Year everybody. It's 2021. Let's hope 2021 brings uh, better luck this year. So today here in Electronic Science, we have an LCD screen here. Now, this isn't the manual LCD screen, as I like to call them. This is the one where they have the circuitry on the back, so you just have four easy connections on the uh, back here, rather than having to connect each and every one of these pins to the Raspberry Pi. So this is the more convenient method if you have one of these types of LCD screens. In the future, I do hope to make a video on how to hook it an LCD screen up to the Raspberry Pi if you do not have this circuit board on the back of your LCD screen. But nonetheless, uh, let's get right into it and uh, see how we can do this. All right, so taking a look at the back of your LCD screen, we seem to have four connections here, and each of these connections are labeled with something on the circuit board. Now we have ground, we have VCC, we have SATA, and we have SCF. Now, the VCC and ground are probably the most simplest connections on here because VCC is for the 5 volts and the ground is the ground wire. Now, the SATA connector and the SCL connector, all these stand for something. So the SATA connector right over here is what's going to transmit the uh, data back and forth. So basically, whatever you write to your LCD screen, whatever characters you put onto it, is that's what the SATA connector is responsible for. The SCL is responsible for actually putting that onto the LCD screen. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, if you have a Pi breakout, or what they call is a GPIO extension board, it's going to make your life relatively easy in the sense that you could see SATA1 right here and SCL1. Now there's also SATA2 and SCL2. Now this is important. Make sure you plug it into SATA1 and SCL1 because if you don't, your LCD screen and Pi won't be able to talk back to each other because you're going to have to specify that in the code that you've changed it to SCL2 and SDA1 or SATA1. So yeah, if you want to, the code by default is just SDA1 and SCL1. So it's important that you plug it into there. And then the two other connections are just VCC and ground, and you're just going to connect it to your 5-volt pin, which is being blocked by this wire, your 5-volt pin, and then any ground that you would like. So let's get to uh, connecting this thing up. Oh, and uh, throughout the video, you're going to see this little bit of circuitry right here. Now, what this is doing is actually running the fan over here on the Pi. Let's see. It's a very little quiet fan over That's just keeping my CPU cool and my GPU cool so that the Raspberry Pi doesn't overheat. And this little LED here is just to indicate that it is on, even though I technically have this indicator light. But hey, I love wiring circuits in. All right, so for this project, I highly recommend if you have male to female uh, connectors uh, for your Raspberry Pi's GPIO out, I highly suggest you use those because then you're going to have to use or tie in wires to the pins on here, which is very dangerous because if you short it out, you have the potential to destroy your Pi. So be very careful with that. Now right here I have the four female connectors going out from the male connectors on the uh, breadboard breakout board. And so all I'm going to do is connect these in. So you're going to connect SATA to SATA, ground to ground, etc, etc. So let's do that. Now that you have connected your LCD screen and your Pi is on, it'll look like this. It'll be on and it might even have all these bars on the very top line illuminated. That's fine. That's completely normal. Now we need to download the uh, driver, the LCD driver, so that your Pi can talk back and forth with this thing off of GitHub. So all you're going to do is do that in the command prompt. And then we're going to download the example code from the Pi guy. And uh, this will make it so you don't have to go in right away and program your own code for it. And then from there, you can break out and do your own little codes and projects with it. And I'll show you guys one that I made in a few minutes. So let's get going with that. First, you're going to go to git clone, uh, github, the Raspberry Pi guy, LCD. And all you're going to do is type that into the first command line. And then you're going to do cd lcd. And then you're going to click ls to 
install this driver. So you're going to go sudo sh install.sh. And this is going to basically install the driver so that uh, your LCD screen will be compatible with the Raspberry Pi and they'll be able to talk to each other. Now here's the important part. You're going to have to reboot your Raspberry Pi after this. CD LCD when you're back into a command prompt. And then do ls to list the things within that directory. And then you're going to do nano demo lcd.py and this is going to show you the demo lcd script from the pi guy at the very top here is import lcd driver so as you can see here when i uh, first try to run the program uh, wouldn't work uh, because i did not change and specify in the code what my lcd's address is we're going to nano LCD driver.py. This is your LCD driver that makes and works your Raspberry Pi's LCD. You're going to scroll down to address, and for my specific LCD screen, it is 0x3f. Your LCD screen might be the other one. Now that you've done that, you're going to want to go into a command line here, and you're going to have to CD into your uh, LCD. Uh, zoom you guys in here and uh, we could do ls and you should be able to see all the things listed in your directory now mine has a lot more because as you can see I've been doing a couple different projects with this thing writing my own code for it now one thing you must know that I figured out is if you want to write your own code and have it work with the LCD screen you have to do it nano in this LCD screen Directory if you don't do that and uh, your Python is basically going to tell you look I don't know exactly where your LCD driver is therefore the code does not work So you're gonna have to do everything in here So that's why you just do nano and then you just go in there You write your code and then you save it as whatever your name is dot py make sure you can name it anything Just make sure it's dot py for Python so that it knows that and then all you got to do is just do Python whatever it is, and then click enter, and it should run your program. So for the first one, we're just going to be doing the demo LCD, which is the one that the Pi guy has provided to us here. And if I nano into it right here, we can see I've changed it up a little bit. I have it saying, hello, everybody, uh, with a little smiley face for the bottom line. This is Ethan from eScience. That eScience basically stands for electronic science, guys. So uh, that's basically how I arranged that. So uh, let's see how this works. All right, so here we go. We have our uh, LCD screen hooked up to the Pi here, and we're just going to type into here Python demo underscore LCD.py and click enter. And as we can see, hello everyone with the smiley face on the bottom. This is Ethan from eScience. Now this is just going to keep looping until we keyboard interrupt the program. And to do it is just control C on your keyboard and it will stop the program and erase all the things that are on the LCD screen. And that is just the LCD.cleanup in the script. If you don't add that, uh, when you stop the script, all the things will still be on the LCD screen. And the only way to erase them is to either include that in your script or unplug the LCD screen and plug it back in and that will clear it. So yeah, it's very, very simple here. And we'll run it again. Hello, everybody. This is Ethan from Electronic Science. Sorry, it's kind of showing up bad on camera here. This is the best we could do with the lighting we have. So guys, now you have a functioning LCD screen. And the Pi Guy has a lot of different demo scripts in here. He has the scrolling one, which makes things scroll across the LCD screen. He has things that um, make it so that it goes faster or slower. It shows the time in nanoseconds and half a nanoseconds, like billionths of seconds. He can make it show your IP address, everything like that. Now I just want to show you guys a perfect example. See how I just moved the LCD screen earlier. You gotta be very careful if you jolt the cable, what will actually happen here is you can see you begin to corrupt everything that is going on to it. Um, yeah, so don't like jiggle your cable because that like literally corrupts everything that's being sent to it. So literally the only way to fix this is to stop the script here run it again and hope to goodness gracious that it begins to work again and it is and if it doesn't all you got to do is just unplug it plug it back in and reset everything slash refresh everything on the display and everything will resume back to normal and as we can see i've stopped the script before it cleaned everything up so yeah i gotta kind of reset this but yeah so just be careful not to jolt your cables 
Now when you first start up your LCD screen, you may see a little something like this. And when you run your code, this still happens. Now don't panic, your LCD screen is not broken. Just turn it around and look at the back. See right over here guys? There's a potentiometer back there. Now this basically adjusts the resolution on your LCD screen. So just take a simple star head screwdriver and just go into here and turn it the other way until you get the proper output that you need. There we go, just like that, it's starting to look even better. So here I've made a very simple oscillation circuit with the LCD screen involved. So right here we have a blue LED and a red LED, and so these are just going to be blinking back and forth. Now what the LCD screen is going to do, the LCD screen is basically going to state red is on and then red is off, blue is on, blue is off, and it's going to keep refreshing for as long as I want it to go. So here I'm going to start the script here. You can see it says red on and then red off, blue on, blue off, and then it clears and then we do a red on, red off blue on and blue off and this will just keep going for as long as I want it to hopefully you guys can see the LCD screen okay there the lighting is actually pretty bad with these LCD screens and cameras they don't mix very good and that might be a little bit better might be a little bit worse but um yeah hopefully you guys can see that um but yes it is working it is basically in correlation with the lights over here and it is just letting it know whether they're on and off, and it just basically lets the user know. So, yeah, and this is just uh, coded in Python. So, yeah, very simple circuit, but involving the LCD screen in it just for proof of concept. Here's a script that I wrote if you'd like to give it a try. Once again, it is coded in Python. I would like to thank everybody for joining us here for another video on electronic science. If you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a thumbs up on this video. Maybe you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you do enjoy our content. Also, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this project, have any cool video ideas for the future, or if you just like to comment. On that note, guys, I would like to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.